We're going to move on to an anatomy question now. Okay. So can you tell me what the indications and contraindications of performing a caudal in a child? Um, so a caudal epidural is a um, injection used for pain relief, most commonly in children. Um, it's used for anything where pain relief is needed under the level of the umbilicus. Okay, can you think of any particular examples that you've seen it used in? Um, I've seen it used for um, hernia surgery mm -hmm. um, and circumcision surgery. Anything else you can think of? Uh, I think that's all I've seen okay, it used for. Fine. Can you tell me what the contraindications to a caudal block is? What are they? Um, so the contraindications are um, patient refusal, um, problems with um, blood clotting um, and local infection. Okay, you said patient refusal. Um, this is a, a block in a child. Um, would you like to elaborate your answer? Uh, sorry, yes, I meant um, parent refusal probably in this case. Now this is an anatomy viva, so uh, I'll need to ask you a little bit of anatomy. Can you tell me what the anatomy of the sacral canal is? Um, so this, a caudal epidural is um, uh, injection through the sacral coccygeal okay. membrane. Okay. Um, the canal, so, ba so essentially you're um, looking for, a, there's an equilateral triangle um, with the coccyx forming the base of the triangle um, and the sacral coccygeal membrane is just above the base of the triangle. Can you give me any relations, like what is fine anteriorly, anterior to the sacral canal? Uh, anterior is the fused sacral vertebral bodies. Good, okay, and what will we find laterally? Laterally is uh, facet joints subcutaneous tissue, skin, um, yeah. Okay, so what does the sacral canal contain? So the sacral canal contains nerves, um, sacral nerves, pudendal nerves, um, yeah, they're the main ones. Anything else? Fat, um, epidural veins, okay. yeah. Now, um, can you tell me where the dural sac ends in a child? So the dural sac ends much lower in a child uh, than an adult, um, and it can be as low as S1 in a child. Okay. So let's move on. Can you tell me how you would perform a caudal block? Um, I've never actually um, performed a caudal block. Um, but have you yeah. seen them done? Um, I have seen them done by um, a paediatric anaesthetist, yep. Well, can you tell me how you would do one then? Okay. Um, so I would make sure the patient's in a place of anaesthetic safety with full um, resuscitation equipment, um, a trained assistant and full patient monitoring. Okay, we'll, we'll assume the patient, um, you'd like to do this when they're asleep. That's right, yeah. isn't it? Yes. So let's assume yeah. you've got all that. Um, okay. you can, how would you going to do it? Um, so I'd... Um, uh, Make sure, ensure good IV access. Yeah, they'll um, be asleep, so hopefully they'll have IV access. Yeah. Um, so with a patient on their side, mm -hmm. um, I would, I'd, and uh, with I would be fully aseptically prepared. Um, mm -hmm. I would um, clean the skin and identify the landmarks. And you're looking to feel the sacral cornu and the um, uh, sacral coccygeal membrane between the two sacral cornu. Um, you then do an injection, um, you pop through the sacral coccygeal what, what sort of needle would you use? Um, I've seen my consultant use a blue needle, um, so I'd probably use the same. Um, and then I would inject my local anaesthetic um, solution, uh, aspirating every couple of mils. Okay, um, let's say this is an orgotopexy. Uh, what sort of volume and what solution would you use for this? 
Um, so there's a formula um, which you can use to calculate the volume of local anaesthetic depending on the block height um, that you need and uh, I would choose to use 0.5 mils uh, per kilogram of 0.25% bupivacaine. Do you know what that form, who, who described the formula in the first place? No. That's all right, don't worry. Uh, what other things do people add sometimes to their solutions to affect the block or prolong the block? Um, I've seen um, ketamine added and um, opioids. Um, they're the main things I've seen used. Okay, well thank you very much. Thank you. The candidate has a hesitant start and a slow approach to her answer. Clinically she appears to be inexperienced and when answering consent issues she generalises without thinking directly about the question. Her anatomical knowledge is very borderline with several mistakes and hesitations. By referring to her senior colleague's approach to the blocks would seem to indicate the lack of clinical exposure or an unwillingness to commit to an answer. When pushed about the technique, this technique was not well described. Overall, a borderline answer.